Sleep country Canada. Why buy a mattress anywhere else? What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Strength Classroom. Top three deadlift assistance exercises. We are shifting over. In my opinion, these are the top three squat assistance exercises. Depending on your body structure, your training history, what muscle groups or part of the kinetic chain you are missing, everything is going to be individual. So you have to take all of this with a pinch of salt. Variation number one is going to be anything that stresses the upper back more. So if you have an upper back weakness, this category is for you. You can start off with front squats. This is going to hammer your quads a lot more, your abdominals, so the front part of your core, but especially up your upper back. Because if you do not have a strong upper back in this regard, you're going to lose the bar. You're going to get dumped forward. Now, your quads can also be a limiting factor here, but I would say that's really not the case. Now, if you have very poor mobility and cannot perform front squats, what I suggest if you have access to a safety squat bar is instead of going in the safety squat bar, normally you flip it around so that there is more stress on your upper back. This prevents you from having to increase your mobility before you can use any type of meaningful weight on the exercise. Now let's say you can't do front squats because you're limited with mobility and you cannot do safety squat bar squats like I just described because you simply don't have access to one. What I like to do last resort is to have a normal barbell but to attach bands to it but not so the bands are up and down so the bands are actively pulling you forward. Now, this is going to force you to keep your chest up out of the hole. If not, it's going to pitch you forward and you might end up not being able to complete the rep. So this doesn't really help your upper back musculature. Well, it does, but it more so gives you a good cueing point to always be driving the bar backwards so that you don't get pitched forward. And last but not least, if you don't have access to bands, you can just do searcher squats. It's not as good as the other two, but you know what? Turn chicken shit into chicken salad. Number two are pin squats. Now, before I go forward this, pin squats, any variation will be suitable. A front pin squat, a specialty bar, such as a safety squat bar pin squat, just a normal back squat pin squat. A pin squat is a pin squat. Doesn't matter what bar you use, the thing that's more important is how you perform them and where you set the pins. This allows you to just explode out of the hole and not rely on any type of rebound out of the hole. So if you're someone that gets a lot of bounce out of the hole and you just wanna build up that strength rather than relying on a stretch reflex, perfect exercise for you. Ultimately, you will use less weight overall, but that's okay because you're strengthening a certain position and a certain part of the exercise. So you don't need to use max weights here. You just need to use challenging weights for that range of motion. You can start off directly at the bottom and start the bar off on the pins, or you can unrack it, go down, settle on the pins, and then come back up. I like either way, but just know it's a little bit harder to set up if you're putting them right at the bottom because you have to get under the bar, get your positioning all into place. So it's completely personal preference in my opinion. But what you don't want to do is if you're unracking from the top is to just go down there, wait for half a second and come back up. You need to completely settle at the bottom, regain your tightness and then explode back on the way up. I like to set this to where you're at parallel, below parallel, slightly above parallel. Those are three pin settings that I like. This will help you build power out of the hole and just help you gain confidence at the bottom of the movement. And number three, Hatfield variations. So if you've been following my workout vlogs a lot, you know I've been doing a lot of Hatfield squats recently. And this is when you use a safety squat bar, there's no way around it, and you have to have either a barbell in front of you, some band pegs, something you can hold on to. Now, one might think this is a good exercise, let's say if you don't have a leg press, but to me, this is not a leg press replacement. This is not even an exercise that 
stresses the legs more. In my opinion, this is an overloading exercise where you don't have to worry about balance and the slight hand assistance you're giving yourself to get yourself out of the hole will allow you to pile on more weight, which will allow your body to just know what greater loads feel like. And then this will trickle down, which will allow you to use greater loads with standard squatting exercises. So I consider this an overloading movement. What I used to do when I was younger in order to gain confidence going into a powerlifting competition is to just do squat walkouts and hold a heavier weight than normal, which would help me gain confidence with holding more weight than I'm used to squatting, which did work, don't get me wrong. But when you're doing Hatfield squat variations, you get to feel this weight throughout the entire range of motion. And that's what makes this different. To make this exercise even more effective, you could add bands or chains, which will allow you to do like some conjugate stuff like uh, speed work, or just if you're weaker at the top, it'll help strengthen that range of motion. So all in all, find out where you're weak, plug in one of these variations and watch your squat go through the roof. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen.